All right, so I just uh, unbox my new bike here. Got an Oli, Fugitive. Uh, this is the 138. Size medium. So it's a nice, uh, it's a nice raw finish. It looks like they, looking at it, it's, it looks like they didn't even coat it. Yeah, I don't see a coating on it. It just looks like it's been brushed a little bit, cleaned up. Uh, and that's it. And otherwise, it's just straight, straight up raw. So, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's a nice. Uh, it looks real nice. Frame looks nice. All the linkages look real nice. Um, yeah, it's a nice looking bike. Nice looking frame. Let's see. The welds are nice. Nice stack of stack of dimes. Internal um, cable routing. That's the bash plate. Fox uh, X2 float float X2. So, uh, so I I never tried this before, but I've heard the you know this it rides real nice, but but the thing I heard about is is that it's. Um, because it's still, you know, it's new this past year for 22. Uh, people are having problems with it with the, uh, I'm not sure because it's new or, or it's just a new design uh, where it's not, you know, it's maybe it's more finicky or something like that. You know, it's a little bit more complicated. I think with the Fox, Fox suspension is that they tend to require like a lot of specialty tools. That's why a lot of people like to go with the uh, rock shocks since I'm to have all those specialty tools. Yeah, this is a nice frame. It's heavy though. That's it. Yeah, it feels heavy. I need to take it, take it apart and, uh, or take all the stuff off. Take all this other stuff off and I'm gonna weigh it, weigh the bare frame and see how much it weighs. Let's see the rest of the stuff, the rest of the parts. Got the wheels, whatever wheels these are. I have no idea what wheels these are. Race face wheels, okay. Race face trace. Race face is I believe I believe race face is owned by Fox. Fox bought out race face uh, I can't remember how many years ago now. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go with these. I don't I think I'm just gonna sell these tires because uh, I don't really use beefy ass tires. You know, this is essentially this is a you know, at least to me anyways, it's a trail bike. So I'm gonna go with trail trail bike tires. And that's the thing the, the trend with, with mountain bikes nowadays that yeah, seems like every bike they just throwing on some like DH tires you know because these these are straight up DH tires right DH right DH downhill front right this is DHR so downhill rear that don't make no sense to me I'm gonna put on some trail tires a bit less beefy because we I don't need I don't need this you know I'm not I'm not doing ski lift rides or you know park riding or anything like that I'm just trail riding I don't want to carry the extra weight, basically. Anyways, the, the rest of the bikes here. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna build it up and uh, see how it goes. But before that, I'm gonna weigh the weigh the bare frame and see how much it weighs.
All right, here's my Noli uh, Fugitive. So I finally, uh, I've had it for like a month now. I got it about a month ago, but it got COVID. Uh, then it got busy, so I finally built it up. Um, anyways, uh, Fugitive, this is 138, right? 138 in the back and uh, 150 in the front. Basically, 138 in the back is like, it's 140 basically. Uh, 150 in the front. Uh, it comes really ni nicely specced. Um, you know, XT, drivetrain, brakes, uh, four piston brakes, um, Fox 36 uh, factory, float X2, shock. So everything's real nice. I'm not sure about the wheels. I have no idea, you know, these are race face wheels. These are race face, uh, let's see, it says race face trace, trace wheels. So I'm not sure the quality of the wheels, how well nice these wheels are. It's aluminum, it's aluminum uh, rim. Um, let's look at the, uh, the cassette. So it's not very, it's not very, uh, I don't think it's very, Yeah, I don't think it's very uh, fine, you know, high high engagement point on the cassette, the cassette body. I have no idea how many, you know, how many uh, teeth it is, how many points of engagement. Uh, so I see how it is. I usually like a, a, a high point of engagement because, especially for technical climbing, outside of technical climbing, I don't see the need for that. But in technical climbing, man, it makes a bit, it makes a big difference. Um, really does make a big difference. Uh, let's see what else with this bike. So yes, I'm not sure about the wheels. I'm not sure about the uh, about the seat post. Is this is a SDG uh, dropper post? So I know at SDG they make saddles. So but I'm not sure about the seat post. I'm, you know, uh, you know, usually with seat posts, if you look at like like the two hundred dollar range seat posts, usually people use one up, and one up is really nice. I you know I have a one up on my. Uh, on my uh, privateer 141 and it's and I, I like it and when when the price goes up to like 350 or so people usually use uh like bike yoke you know there's a few brands you know one up's nice pacific uh, pnw is nice i think i like one up more uh than bike yoke uh bike yoke's real nice too because they have that that especially that that better model they have that little bleeder up on top so i have no idea how you know about this how it compares uh so i'm not sure about this uh the the saddle is i don't never even heard this brand lift crow mag anyways it's still steel steel fr frame saddle not too much cut out right here i would have liked a little bit more especially like right here where you know where my my balls are uh relief you know relieve, relieve some of the pressure right here but i always you know on my trail bikes i always angle my saddle down a little bit because remember when you're climbing you know, you're climbing up so when you're climbing up at that the saddle will level out um and you know for most of my rides for example i will ride an hour and climbing i will spend an hour climbing and i and it takes like uh, maybe 15 minutes to go down so so that's why and when you're going down you're mostly on your feet anyway you, you know you're mostly off the saddle um a lot of times so um so so saddles doesn't matter too much uh for down downhill but for for climbing you're on the saddle most of the time oh, I, i'm on the saddle most of the time i rarely ever get off the saddle so i like to uh level it out when i'm when i'm climbing um let's see so it has race face uh handlebar this is carbon so it's real light i'm not sure which let's see what brand what what model is this i mean what model is this anyways it's a race face uh you says race faces oh right here next I think the next is a, a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, uh, level in race. I'm not sure if it's the top tier, but it's pretty high up there. But anyways, it's carbon. Uh, the stem is kind of cheap though, the, or the stem, I wouldn't say it's cheap. It's, the stem is like mid-grade, so the, the uh, effects, so I think that's mid-grade. I believe this, the, the seat post is mid-grade and this is probably like mid-grade as well. Not necessarily the lowest end. Um, and oh, and Chrome Mag uh, grips. 
same brand as the uh, as the saddle. So so far these they feel okay. So I mean I haven't ridden this bike yet. Obviously you can see it's still brand new. I just barely finished building it up. Um, let's see. So they didn't come with with pedals. So I put pedals on. I have these are the uh, candies. This is the plastic one. Uh, I like the plastic ones. The plastic platform because it's lighter. It's lighter by quite a bit compared to the, the aluminum one. Uh, so the thing that's different about this bike, I'm not sure why they did this. You know, this bike, you know, this Noli is from uh, uh, BC, uh, Vancouver area, right? So they're, they're, all the Noli bikes are designed to be ridden up in the North Shore, basically, for the most part. So this, this bike's designed for that. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm far from the North Shore, you know, here I am in, in the Santa Cruz Mountains, California. There are some some trails out here that are actually similar to to the North Shore, but I usually don't ride those. Those are like way too advanced for me. Um, at least for right now, maybe may my my younger self, twenty years ago, I could ride that, but I, I've been out of the game for for fifteen years now, so I don't have the skill set anymore. Uh, so, anyways, so yes, for it's for BC, so it's uh, it's meant for aggressive trail riding. Um, so back to the chain ring. So I'm thinking because. In the uh, North Shore, the trails up there are pretty steep, so so I think possibly that's the reason why they went with a 32 chain ring instead of the usual industry standard. It's usually 32, so this is a 32. Uh, so that I, I that was that was kind of weird. So so that that could be one reason. The other reason it could be that uh, because of the supply chain problems we had the last few years, uh, the only the only one that was available was 32 and not a you know instead of a 32 tooth. But uh, and, and those are the two possibilities. Another thing that that, that this thing is missing is it's missing a uh, a chain um, retentioner right here. I would like to have that. You know, I don't necessarily need a chain guard because I ne I don't I never I can't re remember the last time I actually hit my chain. Uh, I I never hit hit the chain on these new one by drive trains anymore because the ring here is so small. But back when you know when we had the triple ring up here with the forty four tooth, I've hit that before forty four tooth. But but ever since. I've gone e even before the, this one by drivetrain came out. When I was running uh, single speed, I was running a, um, I think I was running a 33 tooth in the front. Uh, and, I, and with that bike, I never hit any, anything. And, and, and other bikes where I use, you know, basically it's like the, on a triple ring, this is basically a, a, a mid, the middle ring size, right? So, so that middle ring size, you know, more or less a few teeth, I've never hit my uh, my chain ring so I, never, I don't have to worry about chain guard uh, but I would like to have the chain guide right here to you know retain the, the chain even though this thing is, is a is Shimano just like I mean both I think both Shran and Shimano does the same thing where they go uh, the, each you know that's why it's always even to because it, it's a uh, thick thin thick thin you know so to, to fit into the chain so the space in between the links so that way it retains the chain a little better but I still like to have a, a little chain guide, so so it, so the bike doesn't come with that. So that's kind of I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, maybe I may, I think maybe Noli left all that out because in the North Shore and you you know on the North Shore you definitely want a chain guide or a chain uh, chain guard. So maybe Noli left it out so that way you, you could decide on what chain guard you want because you know some people are kind of particular I guess, and also maybe you could change the chain ring and whatever. But you know usually the chain guard. Uh, you know, they have a range of chain ring sizes. You know, it's kind of like pedals, right? You know, because everyone is so particular about the pedal, which pedal they use. That's why, you know, when you buy uh, bikes uh, that are not budget bikes, they always don't have, they don't come with pedals because, uh, you know, it, people are particular with, with, with that. So I think that's about the only thing that's really missing, which I would like to have, is that little guide. And I would have liked this tooth to be a, a 32s, I mean, excuse me, 32, which is 30, 32s, because the back is a 51. So 30, 51, that's a really low gear. I would never spin that gear. But actually, you know what? I haven't ridden since Christmas weekend. So basically, it's been a month since I last rode, and I had COVID the last, uh, I had COVID actually just after Christmas. So the first week I was, I had a fever. Actually, the, I had, had like a, yeah, a fever. And the second week I had a very, very, it was very low fever and, you know, and by the third week, I was more or less okay, but um, but so I haven't ridden for like a month now, 
and it's been raining here in California so much that all the trails are all closed because it's so muddy and uh, and I don't like to ride when it's that muddy anyways because it, it destroys the trails it really erodes the trail really fast so probably maybe this weekend it will be dry enough I think because this whole week it's been dry except for um, yeah this whole week's been dry I see the last time it rained was last last Wednesday and today is already I think today is already Wednesday so the last time it rained was like a week ago so it sh should be dry by this weekend uh, let's see what else with this bike. I think I just need to weigh it, so I'll do a different video on that. Thanks for watching. All right, so here's my Noli um, Fugitive. Let's look at it real quick. Noli Fugitive uh, 138, right? It's brand new. Uh, so I just finished building it up. Uh, the only thing I, I well, I have my uh, my uh, crank. Crank Brothers uh, candy pedals on here, and I'm also running uh, uh, Maxxis uh, Recon Recon 2.6 uh, width. So, so I like I like those because they're lighter. But anyways, I'm gonna weigh it and see how much this bike weighs. And hopefully, I could get this thing in the the picture frame. Let's see. So about right there. So I'm using a park tool uh, scale here. All right, so let's turn that on, zero it up. Oh, 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 save it. Oh, it's not that bad. Look at that. Thirty-three. I can't keep it steady. It's under thirty-four pounds. It's like 33 and a half. Let's, say, let's call it 33, 10, 10 ounces. About 33 and a half. Oh man, I can't keep it steady. That's why it wasn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't stay still. But that's, actually, that's not too bad at all. 33 and a half. Well, well that's lighter than my, my privateer. 